What is next for the Washington Mystics? In 2024, the Mystics went 14-26, number 9 offense, number 7 defense, while finishing the season 6-4 over their final 10 games, almost making the playoffs super, super close there after starting 0-11 with many injuries, the fourth worst start in WNBA history to almost making the playoffs is an awesome turnaround. For some more numbers, they were 6th in pace, ninth in 2-point percentage, 2nd in 3-point percentage, 2nd in 3-point attempt rate, and 2nd in assist rate as well. So looking at those three numbers there, a lot of ball movement, efficient shooting, and also a high 3-point attempt rate. Those are indicators of a modern offensive system, what Eric Tebow is doing after his dad was the head coach. Similar system here with some key modern principles as well. 12th in turnover rate, a bad mark, worst in the league. But you have to consider, Brittany Sykes missed a lot of time. They also have many rookies in the front court. They have Aaliyah Edwards. They also have Jade Melvin, who is a second-year player, but the youngest player in the W at point guard. Julie Van Lue as well, who is a rookie, 32 years old, but still her first minutes in the W. A lot of adjustment process there with those players, new teams and everything. But all things considered, a great season for Washington, considering the start. Other wins from this season, Aaliyah Edwards showed a lot of promise in her rookie season. The ability to work out of dribble handoffs, make passing reads, and be a versatile defender. She has some work to do, obviously, with her finishing. 50% from two isn't exactly what you want it to be, but she was a good finisher in college. I feel confident about her finishing style. It's just the speed of the game, getting more comfortable, finishing against the best players in the world. But she has upside. I wouldn't quite say she has all W upside, not even sure if she'll be an all-star, but this is someone that's going to play a decade in the league, be a high-quality pro, and fill so many gaps for Washington. An awesome pick there. Also, some more wins, Stephanie Dolson. She had one of the best shooting seasons ever from a true big. Going from her college career, where she was a non-shooter, post-up big, to being drafted by Mike Tebow, Eric's dad, in 2014. She was a non-shooter as a rookie, but continued to develop in their infrastructure. By the time she left for Chicago in 2017, she was a 40% three-point shooter, now back in Washington again, almost seven-ish years later, 46.5% from three on four attempts per game, pretty much all pick-and-pop threes, Catch and shoot threes, no off dribble, just an elite shooter at six foot five. She is 32 years old. She'll be in her age 33 season next season. But with her skill set being a shooter and not relying on athleticism, I don't expect much drop off. Maybe she's not a 43% shooter next season. But whenever you're on a rebuilding team, having a big that can space the floor and understands the schemes and everything you need to do on the court offensively, it's so valuable for a rookie or a second-year player that's trying to get used to the game. Having that extra space, having the the safety valve of a stretch big like Stephanie Dolson, it makes things so much easier. Also, just the player development is another win for me. They continue to find players on the margins. Emily Engsler, Jade Melbin, Sika Kone, who were undervalued by other teams. For Angsler, she was signed as a free agent, was drafted in 2022 by Indiana, was cut, played for some different teams, and hasn't really had a solid footing in the W. This season, the passing has popped, the rebounding, the defensive playmaking, the shooting also took a level up as well. We're seeing that with Washington. You can make a case that they're the best at developing shooters in the W of any single team, like Stephanie Dolson, for example, also, Emma Miesemann as well was major shooting development success for them in the mid-2010s. And then for Jade Melbourne, she was traded from Seattle before the season because Seattle wanted to prioritize Nika Mule, who didn't play basically the entire season, played some garbage minutes, only scored like two points or whatever on the entire season. Jade is a better long-term prospect than Nika, in my opinion, and Jade was traded for a third-round pick. Third round pick was basically nothing. They got her for free. They were going to cut her anyways. And Jade didn't have the most amazing season, but she's still 21 years old, is an awesome driver. The finishing needs some work, obviously, but she's extremely quick, can generate rim pressure. The passing pops as well. The pick and roll operation, 
The defense was better this season as well. For such a young player with a lot of valuable tools at the guard position, to get her for pretty much nothing and take a shot on her and have her in your developmental system where you know how to develop shooters is like an immediate A-plus trade. Also, Sika Kone, they acquired her at this year's trade deadline for Maisha Heinz Allen. Heinz Allen is a good backup big slash forward, but Heinz Allen was on an expiring contract. They obviously weren't going to re-sign her with Shakira Austin, Aaliyah Edwards, Emily Angsler. Her time just kind of ran up with the franchise. She was going to leave anyway. So to trade her for Sika Kone, who is 22 years old, a super interesting mobile big, shocker, another mobile big for, for Washington. And that's the thing with Stephanie Dolson. Having Shakira Austin, who is a good driver, same with Aaliyah Edwards, Sika Kone, these are all bigs that excel as drivers from the elbow, from the mid post, whatever it is. Having Stephanie Dolson to space the floor, give them room to operate, is a major plus. And for Kone, in the last game of the season, she scored 20 points and had 7 rebounds against the Indiana Fever on 7 of 10 shooting in 22 minutes. Still only 22 years old. 22. She won't be 23 until next July. So one of the youngest players in the W to have her as well. Bring her into training camp next season. See what you have there. See how she continues to develop over this offseason playing in Europe. So a lot of wins for Washington for being such a bad team. Didn't win a lot of games. So for me, it's a B plus. Same as my grade for Los Angeles. I considered going A minus. If they made the playoffs, it would have been an A minus. Still though, B plus. A lot of massive wins for them. Moving to the offseason portion of this video, the core players under contract moving forward. Errol Atkins under contract, a one year deal. Same with Brittany Sykes and Stephanie Dolson, all protected contracts. Shakira Austin as well, she is on a protected contract after they picked up her fourth year rookie option and then she'll be a restricted free agent next offseason. Most likely she'll get an extension off of that. Austin is one of my favorite young prospects in the W among players 25 and younger. The athleticism, the defensive potential, the driving ability. Her problem is she has just been hurt again and again. Last season, she played only 19 games. This season, only played 12 games. As good of a prospect she is, if she can't stay healthy, it is a worry. It's a, it's a serious worry with her long term. Still, though, having all these draft picks, Aaliyah Edwards, who is also on her rookie contract, Sika Kone as well, you are in a decent position. If she continues to get hurt, you have the depth there. Emily Inksor as well. You have a lot of players in your front court room moving forward that are pretty young. A couple other players under contract, the first of which is Elena Deladon. She actually like isn't technically under contract by Washington, but they did core her this past offseason. Coring is the same as like a franchise tag in the NFL. She set out this season. She doesn't want to play for Washington, it seems like. But let's say in January, she decides she wants to come back to the W and she wants to play again, but she wants to get traded. If Washington explores trade options with her, that is another asset for them. So that's why I'm counting her as a player under contract because it could potentially be a first-round pick, a future first-round pick, whatever, because Elena Deladon, if she's healthy, is worth that completely, even if she is 35 years old. A late first-round pick for EDD is completely fair value to me. Also, Carly Samuelson, she is a protected contract as well. The interesting thing for me with Washington is I'm wondering who's not going to get picked up in the expansion draft or who they're not going to be able to protect in the expansion draft. Having all these players under contract, more young players with Jade and Sika as well, I could see Golden State saying, I want Carly Samuelson on my team if they want to protect Jade and Sika instead because they're younger, because Carly can shoot. If you're a young team like Golden State, you could use having a floor spacer on the wing like Carly Samuelson, who shot almost 40% from three this season on high volume, but I could see her playing for Golden State next season. And then the two key free agents entering this offseason for Washington are Julie Van Lu and Emily Engsler. I would probably re-sign both of these players. Engsler, interesting young prospect with her ability to do a little bit of everything. Van Lu can initiate a ball screen, 
can pass the ball like crazy, can make some pull-up threes as well. Someone that I would have as a backup point guard for sure with her experience. And then 2025 draft picks. Washington is in a very good spot. They have two first-round picks in this class and two most likely like top six picks as well. And with their own pick, they have a 10.4% chance at number one. They also have a first-round pick via Atlanta slash Dallas. This pick was traded from Atlanta to Dallas in the Alicia Gray trade, and then Dallas traded this pick when they got it from Atlanta to Washington for the draft rights to Stephanie Suarez. A pretty bad trade in hindsight. Atlanta got Alicia Gray, who was an all-star. Dallas got Stephanie Suarez, who didn't play much and is not as interesting of a young prospect as whoever they could take, Washington can take here in the middle of this first round in such a deep class. But also, they have a 2025 second round pick as well via Connecticut, which will probably be in the mid to late second. For their team needs this offseason, as is for most teams, you need a long-term answer at point guard. Julie Van Lu will be 32 in 2025, and she's a good pull-up shooter, but she is limited in terms of her driving. She has a low free-throw attempt rate. She isn't your long-term answer at point guard. She's more of a stopgap backup point guard, can fill some gaps for you right now. And that ties in with Washington needing some more perimeter shot creation. In 2024, they put Air Latkins into more of an on-ball role. That's not where she's best at, off the ball, making catch-and-shoot threes, being a high-level defensive wing. That's where she's best, can make like 40% of her catch-and-shoot threes. But she was one of the worst pull-up shooters in the W this season. And as a team, they shot 11. They were 11th in the league on pull-up twos, 36%. Also, 26% on pull-up threes. That was 10th. So either at the point guard position and or the two guard, the wing, they need more shot creation. That is a massive need for them moving forward into their rebuild. Also, more versatility. You can't have enough versatility even for this Washington team that has a lot of interesting young prospects. More wings that can shoot could be extremely valuable because they were second in three-point percentage just based off making catch-and-shoot threes and being a high-level passing team with their ball movement. If they can make pull-up threes as well, this is like no doubt the best three-point shooting team in the W. So having an elite shooter, multiple elite shooters that can make pull-up threes would unlock everything for them offensively. For the dream offseason, what needs to happen for Washington to take this next step in the rebuild? First of all, if you can somehow win the lottery with 10% chance, it's happened before in other sports, it's happened in the W before. If they can land Paige Beckers, oh my gosh, this team is contending for a championship in Less than half a decade, at least. Maybe quicker than that, honestly. If not, Aja Sivka is my favorite prospect in this draft for Washington. If you're familiar with Leonie Feebish for the New York Liberty, this is basically the type of player that Feebish is, but like more of an on-ball creator. Like Feebish can make some pull-up twos occasionally, but not many. Is more of a spot-up wing, low free-throw attempt rate. Same for Sivka, but Sivka is like a six-foot-four wing, out of Slovenia, it will be playing in France this season. She is an awesome shooter, awesome passer for her position, better pull-up shooter than Phoebish, but similar defensive level players can really defend multiple positions. That type of player is few and far between. There's not many 6'4 wings that can shoot and move like a wing and not like a big. So Phoebish for Washington would be awesome. I'm hoping it happens. We know Mike T., and their organization loves to scout international prospects. It would not surprise me if they're already taking a look at them, not sourced or anything, but it wouldn't surprise me if she is on their radar for some more interesting prospects if they don't land Paige. Sonia Citron, Tahina Pow Pow. Also, Georgia Amor could be interesting in the Julie Van Lu type role if they just want someone younger for the future. Also, Olivia Miles could be interesting I know they have some non-shooters, but they have a way of developing shooters. That makes me more confident that having Olivia Miles in Washington system can develop her into like an average shooter compared to someone like Dallas or Chicago. 
They just have more of a track record there. Same with Raven Johnson. I'm a little bit higher on Olivia Miles shooting long-term than Raven Johnson. Also, Lila Filio would be pretty cool as well. Can make some pull-up twos. Charlize Ledger-Walker out of UCLA, transfer from Washington State. She could be in play for them as well. A lot of different prospects that would fit with Washington's doing. Versatility, passing, being able to shoot the ball, defend multiple positions. They have some opportunities to really open this thing up, add some more young players, and take the next step with their rebuild. Also, Elena Deladon trade, get whatever you can get back for her. If she decides to come to the W in a perfect world with this dream offseason scenario, she comes back and you get like a future first round pick for EDD, that would be good value as well. And overall, moving forward, if you can bring back eight to nine players from your 2024 team, Brittany Sykes, Ariel Atkins, and then Stephanie Dolson, a bunch of young players, roster a couple of rookies, and then take a flyer on some more free agents on the margins, maybe add a veteran in here or there if you can you can do so, and this team could make the playoff next season. If they were healthy the entire season, they would be playing in the first round against New York right now. They would not be at home watching from home. They're a better team than Atlanta when healthy. They just weren't healthy this season. Still, though, super exciting team. Much more positive than Chicago or Dallas. I'm a lot higher on their future outlook compared to those teams and franchises. Still, though, let me know what you think in the comments below. What are your thoughts on Washington's rebuild, their future, their young core, and more? Anyways, subscribe, and I'll see y'all next time.